now that we are comfortable with the architecture essentially the service broker uh, to provide cloud services let's look at models to optimize the delivery of services for that i would refer to the itut recommendation y.3508 again it is between 3500 to 3599 uh, which is the cloud computing recommendations uh, we are going to look at the deployment uh, perspective how a uh, cloud could be distributed amongst different stakeholders and then we are going to look at their specific models so what essentially necessitates or triggers the uh, the requirement of having different models first of all the environment of cloud service delivery is challenged because it is a pay as you need model uh, so for an arbitrary number of customers which could vary significantly over time and over space um, it's a challenged environment the challenge becomes more complex once we have real time services in real time services the delivery uh, in time is is a challenge between the provider and the consumer add to this the burden of uh, um load balancing because uh, the consumer is connected to the cloud infrastructure through a certain interface um in one geographical proximity so the load would be coming on a certain data center so uh, is it possible to migrate or offload the the burden on a particular data center by distributing it it's very intuitive to think about different distribution models and uh, the most uh, logical uh, way is going to be uh, divide and conquer that is the nearest uh, uh, consumers should be handled by the providers uh, in a in a geographical proximity so the distributed cloud services uh, could be seen as a an international or a global uh, management uh, activity which manipulates uh, the cloud resources in a in, in a distributed manner uh, by aggregating the infrastructure uh, end to end that is uh, we would have entities like core cloud regional cloud and edge cloud so the core cloud as the name suggests is what mediates or what transition uh, provides trans transit between uh, multiple regional clouds and the regional clouds in a again hierarchical manner would provide um, connectivity and the mediation uh, uh, between multiple um, edge clouds so we have the core clouds which have the largest resources uh, and the global management interfaces the regional clouds uh, could be optional because once we have the uh, core cloud so uh, the core cloud could be present in every nook and corner of the world and could actually provide services directly to the uh, consumer uh, well uh, that could be one way but there are multiple uh, stakeholders then we have different uh, uh, administrative jurisdictions so we need to have some kind of regional presence of cloud as well which could have a boundary of, uh, easily identifiable from the uh, core cloud so it's a, it's an optional entity which is deployed in a certain uh, geographical region um, for load sharing and service quality enhancement of course as we have seen and as we agree that the more uh, hardware components and the more infrastructure we have the better cloud services are going to be so the service quality is enhanced through the participatory role of the regional clouds then we have the edge clouds uh, again the edge as the name suggests is the closest cloud uh, presence to the uh, consumer and it has the smallest resources and why would that be because uh, uh, the users are essentially subscribing to the uh, global cloud the global cloud could and could not delegate the uh, uh, responsibility of executing a certain service uh to to the edge cloud the advantage of having edge cloud is that edge cloud could have local customization which would have no bearing on the global disposition and the global uh, configuration of the um core cloud so this actually helps the customers to have their own flavor of uh, service delivery 
uh, while not bothering the entire uh, outlook of the uh, global cloud. Let's look at the hierarchical relationship between the edge, regional, and core cloud. Uh, so all these essentially turn into uh, some configuration arrangements or configuration models. Let's start with the uh, leftmost side. So horizontally, we have the uh, cloud computing uh, model in which we have the end device, which is directly uh, interacting with the provider A, which is a core cloud. Uh, well, this is uh, what we see moving on the x-axis from the cloud computing uh, model to the distributed cloud model one, model two, and model three. So in the second um, uh, situation, that's model one, we have uh, uh, the end device, which is um, actually talking to the uh, in distributed cloud, which is split between the core cloud and the regional cloud with their own array of shared responsibilities. Then we have the um, edge cloud talking directly to, to the core cloud. And in the last situation, that is the um, cloud service provider D scenario, we have model number four, here number three, uh, where we have the end device talking to the ed edge cloud. Edge cloud in turn is talking to the regional cloud and the core cloud. So this is more akin to, if you recall, the uh, Cisco service architecture. There too, we have the edge layer or the access layer, then we have the distribution layer, and then we have the core layer. So essentially, the uh, reachability and the coverage is enhanced uh, by deploying more clouds, and uh, the work is also offloaded, so the load balancing is it becomes fair. Uh, so all these advantages become very natural. Let's look at an interesting example of uh, cloud computing by using uh, one of the models, that is the uh, model number three, the fourth model. Uh, here we have um, machine learning service where uh, we have the um, end devices on the rightmost side, that's the cloud service consumer, uh, which has some sensory data like uh, uh, on Amazon Cloud, we can we could upload or we could we could, we could migrate data. Uh, so uh, the end devices actually uh, send their data to the to the cloud. Now the edge clouds actually pass this on to the regional cloud, and the regional cloud passes this on to the core cloud. Now the core cloud is now going to train on the machine learning algorithm on this particular um, data set, this corpus. Now this, uh, after having uh, trained, it shares the learned uh, neurons or the machine learning uh, trained algorithm. It shares that with the regional cloud, which encaches it and then subsequently uh, shares it with the edge cloud. So the edge cloud has the, the testing data phase. So we have the collecting, training, caching phases, uh, which precede the testing phase. And the test phase or the uh, actual utilization phase is executed on the edge network. So the edge network first acts as an intermediary for sharing the data or uploading the data right at the core. The core is most computing intensive, learns the patterns, shares those with the regional. The regional acts as an intermediary, passes it on back to the edge. The edge acts as the computing environment where this machine learning learned algorithm actually provides its services to the um, end device. Now, again, this is from the ITUT recommendations uh, 3508, overview and high-level requirements of distributed cloud. 